Okay, now I'm gonna go over the grab release feature. Um, and then I'm going to explain a little bit what is this normalized transitions and normalized wire up. And I think the best way to uh, explain it is to actually like apply to to a shot. So I assemble here some simple poses. So the character is going to uh, grab the apple, throw it into the air, and grab it with the other hand and put it on the table again. So at the moment there's no constraints at all, it's just keys. So if I uh, scroll up through the, the poses here, you'll see that the apple is it's not uh, constrained to anything. So those are the po uh, basic poses that I have. So I'm going to start um, adding some some other stuff here. Okay, so I added just uh, another pose here because I want to give um, the grab a little bit more a feeling of it. So frame 15 will be the actual frame that the hand that I want the hand to start um, grabbing the apple. So one thing to keep in mind here is that because I have keys on all of those frames the apple is always going to stay in the right position on that on those frames so I don't need to worry about uh, you know like making a constraint and losing everything so let's see how I can do this I'm gonna open up this and I'm just going to pin up this uh, grab here space and right now uh, I have the control for the apple, but it's in uh, world space. So the first thing I'm gonna put it into uh, to grab release space. And when you do that, you, this little UI shows up, and then you can start uh, grabbing, grabbing stuff. So right now there's nothing uh, set up. So I'm gonna select the hand control here and I'm going to add it actually I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to add a release first so that's uh, open hand here okay so right now it's uh, a release mean it means it's uh, it's not constrained to anything so it's pretty much like broad space the same concept so the, the grab frame that I want, not the 10 in this case, would be the 15. Not that it matters much, but that's what I, what I like. So I'm going to select the hand there, and I'm going to add as a grab. So it's adding on the frame 15 now. So what that means is that if I move the hand now, the, the apple will go along with it but if I go to this frame it doesn't so it does all of that blending constraint work under the hood and if I skip through the my keys here the apple is, is still there it's not gonna move anywhere but take a look at this <laughs> here is still constrained to the hand there. So at some point I'll have to release it, but I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm just gonna use it uh, to help building me uh, to help me building more poses. So you can see now that from this frame to this one, the apple is fully like uh, following the hand as it should now. So I'm gonna keep it like that, and I'm going to make a uh, just a, like a very rough anticipation here. I'm not gonna be very uh, precious about it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's, that's good enough for the example. So let's say I do this. Actually, let, let me make something a little bit more complex. So you know like how, how good it is to, to have this kind of setup without being like destroyed. Uh, uh, this, it doesn't destroy anything. S and it keeps this control free for animating. So let's say I wanna make the anticipation, but I'm gonna like just grab the apple a little bit more stronger, something like. Okay, that's uh, good for the example. Anticipate it a bit, and then I'm going to. I'm not caring much about the timing just yet. I'm just m m uh, putting some poses here. So, and then I'm going to make another one here. And then now I'm going to just relax the fingers a little bit. So I'm going to move this apple a little bit there. And let's say this apple like is just rolling a little bit. something like this. So this would be my release pose. It's the last pose where the apple um, is constrained to the hand, right? And here I don't want to I don't want that the hand to affect the apple anymore. So I'm going to just add uh, go to that frame and add a release. And again, if I flip through my poses, they are still there. Uh, the twinning on that part is constrained to the hand. And this, it's it's uh, up in the air. Right, it's released. I'm going to make a pose of him. Oops, another one. Him grabbing the apple a little bit higher somewhere in there. What do I have now? Okay, so goes up, grabs it, and then uh, cushions into that pose. And then he's gonna put it back. So uh, again, like if I flip through it, you, you see like the uh, twinning is completely broken there because the the apple is not following the hand yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another grab here. Now with that hand, I don't know if you saw me <laughs> doing it. I just press that button here. And you can also like, let me just uh, delete this. And I'm going to do that with this button instead. So the way that you do it with that button, you, you need to have the control selected first. I mean, it doesn't need to be first, it could be somewhere in the selection. But you need to select both of them. And then you can, uh, Hit what is it? Shift and then click here. It's going to do the same thing. And now you can see that the uh, interpolation is correct. And again, like the rest is still good. To me, what needs to be done? Crushes in here, and then and then here here there's something like with the apple that's uh, I need to going to take care of it because he catches 
in a position where it feels a little bit weird to to put in there. So what I'm going to do actually is going to I think I'm going to change that pose, and then I don't need to uh, to be too worried about that. So I'm going to just move the apple in the position that I already have in this frame here. So I'm using blend to neighbors to do that. So here the interpolation, the apple is not gonna be rolling over. And and then I need to change it here as well. So it's going to just catch in a in a better position for for this to happen. And it makes easier for me. And then I can take care of that uh, transition in the air that's Caesar. Um, okay, so that frame, I can probably um, do another another key here, another pose here where um, the apple just roll a little bit, same way that I did with the grab here. A little, little change here in the pose. I can do the same thing here. Okay, so I have this pose and this one. And I'm going to want the release to happen, I think on the frame 50 will be better. I don't want to the apple to be running around after this one. I want to the apple to be on its own. So I'm going to control and click here to add another release. And from this frame onwards, it's not following this hand anymore. And it just goes freely to that one. And of course I need to adjust that pose because I changed it, so I'm going to just move it that there. Now that I have everything set up, uh, let's let's just adjust that uh, release part here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so I need to move this, I'm going to move this a little bit to the further down there, and the easiest way if you use the nudging tools here, it's going to push the grab and release frames as well. So let me add maybe, you know, maybe add some frames in here. Add some frame here. This one I can just move it away. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the way that, that I would do it. First, let me show you something here. Um, if I look at the axis, it's in a diagonal, meaning if I change the Y here, it's not going up and down. It's going in the diagonal, so we don't want that. And the reason that it's in there, because you need to, uh, it, it inherits all the grabs and releases since the beginning and that's the main problem with working with um, regular blend constraints that it, it, you can't edit that it's just going to start from whatever frame you started so this frame here the apple is pointing up as it should but then the hand turns it all around and then inherits that rotation there. So what you can do here with this, if you had just one release in this shot, you wouldn't need to worry about it, but because Edinburgh would do that automatically, but since I have two, one section here and another one here, I need to specify that I want this one to be the reference the app reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this normalize Y up 
at the frame that I want. And now what happens, let me just refresh this frame. So now what happens is the, uh, the axis was reoriented the way that I want. So you see that uh, the first release now is the one that is uh, in an angle, an angle diagonal. Okay, so now that I have this figured it out, let me just, I can just adjust this as I, as I want. So probably we'll do something more or less like this. Just very roughly, just nothing too special about it. Why don't you make this linear? No, I don't want this one. Just really quickly here. Same with the rotations. I don't want any easy or, or out while it's uh, up in the air. That's it, and then you can keep polishing the way the way that you want, and you have the option to just leave the setup as it is, or if you want, to, you can just toggle it off or bake it down. And the last uh, thing that I want to show is the normalized transitions. What is this? So when you have something that is um, Constrain it in several frames like this. When uh, in, in between those trans transitions here, so let's say this this frame here, where it starts from uh, uh, a release to to the grab of that hand. Let's say I move this hand to another position. Let's say instead of grabbing the uh, apple from here, it's gonna grab from there. And if I move exactly that frame, you see like a, a pop going on here because the apple is still, <clears throat> uh, the constraint is still, you know, happening in the same spot as it was before. So it doesn't account for, for the change. So that's when this comes in handy because that's going to recalculate this automatically without losing the, the process so just you, you don't need to be afraid of applying this because you can use this as much as you want as you need and that's it easy peasy